No one listens. The whirring of the drill vibrates through my fingers, roaring through me in a delicious wave. White noise that promises escape and release. I tell my hands to stop squeezing the trigger, since I don't want to waste the battery. Once again, I check in my crappy cracked mirror to make sure that everything is okay. I push back my long stringy hair to look at the two holes, kind of still a bit scabby. So I pick at the crusty bits to see inside better. The holes are about the size of how round my finger is, but it's dark in there. If I had a flashlight, I could see better, but I don't. It's just dark dark like night time when there aren't any stars. That means the holes are empty and that makes my mouth smile. I've helped my way in that way that only an independent girl can. If you want something done you have to do it yourself. That's the expression goes can't wait around hoping some knight in shining armor is going to rescue you. You have to take control. Which I did. Now it is my turn to help those who cannot help themselves. I can be their knight in shining armor. Or their knightess or whatever the hell a girl knight would be. It's time to do what I was put here on this earth to do. Help others. How free I felt when the voices ran away. <sighs> but it didn't last. Nothing ever does. Have you ever noticed that once you think you can count on something, something finally working out the way it should, then something else comes along and screws it all up? Well, that's kind of what happened to me. Just when I thought I was free of those voices, and that tiny white room, and that stupid white dress, and Mr. Big Burly Guy, then something else came along all right. A new voice. One loud mouth voice bothering me all the time. Maybe it's better than all the other voices nattering and fighting over which way my feet are supposed to go and who has the key. But loud mouth scares me. And again, he has a plan. So maybe he's not bad at all. Just loud. It started a while ago. I had walked so far and so long. It was like I was suddenly born when I was walking. I was wearing the white gown, but it wasn't so very white anymore. I was glad because the white was so bright it hurt my eyes. I had to squinch them shut when I was wearing that damn dress day in and day out in that stupid tiny tiny white room. It gave me such a headache. It was so boring. Nothing to do at all. Sometimes my hands would tear at the gown and the next thing I know Mr. Big Burly Guy was jabbing me with one of those needles and then pain and numbness would wash through me. Mr. Big Burly Guy used to jab me with more than that sharp pointy needle. He was sharp and pointy too. He thought I didn't know, but I could feel him inside me. Sometimes I didn't want him there. But then sometimes I didn't even want him to stop. For some reason the in out, in out of him pushing into me was strangely comforting. It reminded me of how I like to fall asleep at night pushing my fingers into the holes in my head. So there I was, not liking Mr. Big Burly Guy much that day. He must have had something pretty foul to eat because his breath made me want to puke. His hands were grabbing my breast, twisting my nipples so hard I wanted to scream. But I couldn't scream because his wiggly floppy tongue was jammed down my throat. He pulled my legs apart, but this time he didn't tie up my hands. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> you must have forgotten that part of the ritual. One of my hands was stroking his back, 
like I'd seen people do on TV. The other reaching down where he was pushing into one of my other holes. I touched the hair down there. So wiry and coarse. I couldn't tell whose was whose. But I felt a loose flap slapping at me, kind of hanging down near my butthole. It was annoying, that extra damp skin. The noise was really starting to get on my nerves. Slap, 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 slap. My fingers were twitching, itching to stop that sound. My hand clenched around that sweaty, sticky skin and pulled. Never had I heard anyone scream so loud and so hard. It echoed through the holes in my head, right down to my teeth, and gave me one great big headache. Not really sure what happened. I just knew that this was my chance to run, and no matter how much my heart wanted to jump out of my chest, I also had to be so smart so that all those noisy people in white didn't see me. Getting out of that tiny room wasn't so bad, but trying to find my way out of that rat maze, well, thank God it was nighttime and there weren't many people around. I crawled by the front desk and hightailed it down a staircase. Once outside, I stood staring at the night sky. I hadn't seen the stars in a long, long time. Hello, stars. I'm making a wish now. They winked at me. I knew they were laughing, but I made my wish anyways. I wished that I would never have to go back to that tiny white room again. I ran and ran and ran until my throat was complaining. Then I walked and walked and walked. By the time I got to the lake, I saw that my hand was hiding something from my eyes. Open up hand, I said, in wonder of wonders, if it didn't do just that. Somehow I had something like, I don't even know, in my hand. The blood was drying, but then I remembered the skin that had bothered me. It's like a little purse. There was even something inside, like soft, mushy grapes or something. I still have it nailed to the wall. It reminds me of Mr. Big Burly Guy, and also not to let anyone know where I am. I found this place I'm in now, down by the lake, and decided to move in. It's small and it stinks. I don't know who lived here, if anyone ever lived here. Maybe no one has. Maybe it's one of those sports where kids hangs out. So far away hidden, but no one's seen me here yet. Once I dealt with finding a place to crash, I have to get find another drill to finish the hole that those nosy people didn't let me finish. It wasn't that hard to get one. I just went into someone's garage when they weren't home and there it was. A nice new shiny battery operated one. Didn't take long to finish the job. When that final bit of bone was broken through, I cried with delight. I stared at my face in the mirror. Blood welled up a bit, but it was cleansing. A baptism into my new life. Two little holes right there. Just kind of by my hairline. I put my fingers in them, feeling the burn of flesh, freshly opened flesh. I felt so delicious, like home. This is how it should have always been. You see, that was when the voices left. I had one day of walking around, not hearing anyone complaining about anything. It was a dream come true. I went down to the lake to wash and was able to watch the waves without hearing a bunch of bitching and moaning. Down the beach a ways, there was a humongous brown building. It must have been a factory or something. I sat on a nice flat rock and watched some guy walk along the beach. He didn't see me because I was hidden behind some bushes. Oh yes, I know I have to stay hidden or it's back to the white room for me. <laughs> he had long brown hair that blew in the breeze and a baseball cap down over his eyes. I could sort of see his face. He had a nice jaw. 
I thought he looked like the kind of guy I could talk to, and but I wouldn't know what to say. So I just watched him walk along, carrying his stuff. Then everything changed. The next morning, I woke up, and there was someone talking in my ear. The new voice. The dark, scratchy voice. I pushed away the newspapers that were covering me and watched the bugs run away for a new place to hide until bedtime again. They always had to hang around those damn bugs. Why couldn't they find their own place to be? Kathy, the voice whispered. We have work to do. I looked around the room, but there was no one there. Go away. I was really pissed off. Just when I thought maybe I could actually get some peace and quiet, another stupid voice was starting to boss me around. Kathy! I'm not listening to you. Oh, but you will. I don't see you, so I'm not going to talk to you. Everyone else laughs, so I can't you. I put my fingers in my ears, and then I felt something big and heavy land on my head. I shook my head, but it hung on with its weird little nails. Go away! No, I'm here for you now. I reached up and tried to smack it away. There was a flutter of wings, and a black feather fell down to the ground in front of me. I don't like birds! I stood up and started spinning around, hoping it would let go, but it wouldn't. It just clung to my hair with those creepy little bird toes. It clung like Velcro. Saddle down, he commanded. I was getting oh so dizzy, so I sat down. I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. There I was with this big black fucking bird on my head. Its eyes were blacker than his feathers, and he stared at me, piercing me so hard with those creepy beady eyes. My heart started banging against my chest. What do you want? I asked him. He cawed a loud shrieking noise that rattled me to my very bones. Stop that! My fingers dug into my ears again. We have a lot of work to do, he said. And that was that.